Shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Radash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she, who is the she, is referring to Mary, Yahweh Shai's mother, will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Yahweh Shai. At this juncture in the game, we all, we all know that there was no J. The J wasn't created till the 15th century. And there's no E's or U's in Paleo-Hebrew. So that, that name there is a created name. But nevertheless, we call on the name Yahweh Shai. And the reason that is because in Paleo-Hebrew, your name meant something. Even the letters meant something. Yahweh Shai simply means he delivers. He redeems. He's our salvation. Even in the rest of this precept here, that's why he was given that name. Right? Because he will save his people from their sins. As I was reading this, this scripture, a precept popped in my mind. And I'm going to paraphrase it here. It says, um, a good name is better than um, fine oil or, or an ointment. Right? So we have to understand that when we call on the Lord's name, you know, he's going to redeem us from this hell, from this captivity that we are in. But nevertheless, as we're going to learn by way of the spirit through this lesson, that this is what we're waiting for here. We're waiting to be saved. This is what salvation is going to look like for us. Luke chapter 2 verse 11. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you, the Hamashiach, our Lord. Let me read that again. Let me read the main piece. A Savior has been born unto you. Because when the Lord came the first time, when he died, right? He's ultimately the Savior. But when he died the first time, right? A spotless, blameless lamb, perfect. He died to buy back the house of Israel, right? At this particular time, the one-thirds, because we know two-thirds of the house of Israel is going to be destroyed. And that's what even me, myself, I have to remember. Why the Lord came and the purpose of his birth and the purpose of his coming the second time. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 25, verse 9. And that day, they will say, surely this is our power. We trusted in him. And he saves us. Say that again. And he saves us. We're in hell right now, brothers. We're in captivity. We're scattered to the four corners of the earth. We're in Babylon the Great. Right? This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad at his salvation. Man, even reading that scripture just make you want to say, call her law, all praises. To Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Man, you have to get this in your mind. What the Lord is coming to do. But of course, we went off. So this is what the Lord had to do to us. But even in doing this to us, listen to what he reminds us of. In a surge of my anger, I hid my face from you. Who's the you? The house of Israel, the 12 tribes. For a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you. Says the Lord, your what? Redeemer. Let's go from there. Let me read um let me read this precept. Isaiah is just a bad book all the way around, man. It just so many prophecies that, that are currently unfolding. But nevertheless, let me get back to the scriptures here. Isaiah chapter chapter 63, verse 16. But you are you are our father. Man, you are our father. Father, man, sometimes when you read these scriptures, it really sinks into your mind that, that he's our father. You're talking about the creator of the universe, man. He's our father. And he did this to us to punish us so we can turn back to him. Let me start over. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 16. But you are our father through Abraham does Though, pardon me, Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledges us. You, Lord, are our father, our redeemer from 
of old is your name. Let me scroll down. Let me get that in the King James Version. Right? Let me read that bottom portion of the precept again. O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer is thy name is from everlasting. You know? He's, he's, he's coming to save us. As the scripture says, man, he's going to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth, man. Let me come out of this, man. Even when I'm reading this, it's sinking into my spirit. It's sinking into my soul what the Lord died to do and what he's coming to do. Let me go from there. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 17. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will gather you back. I will gather you from the nations and bring you back from the countries where you have been scattered. I will give you back the land of Israel. And this is part of what salvation is going to look like. Man. Not only us being redeemed, not only us being gathered from the four corners of the earth, the Lord giving us back our land, putting his laws in our inward parts, giving us those new bodies, establishing the heavenly kingdom, the kingdom of Israel, which is basically the kingdom of Yahweh. Let's come out of this. Let's go here. This is a future prophecy. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 6. And this is what foolish Christians can't get around and that they probably will never understand until it's too late. The prophecies. And this is one of them. In his days, Judah, southern kingdom, will be saved and Israel, northern kingdom. Remember, <laughs> Hebrews, it came right to my mind. Right? Hebrews came right to my mind. He said, I will put my laws and my statutes in their minds and in their hearts. He said he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and then what? The house of Judah. The Lord is only coming to redeem Israel, man. And that's what Christians have to understand, man. The Lord does not love everyone. He's not coming to redeem everyone. Let me start over. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 6. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in what? Safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous savior, man. Yahweh Shai. Let me just go from there. This is the last piece here, brothers. This is a scripture that I happen to love. I happen to love here because this is also what we're going to be redeemed and saved from, not only from our sins, not only from captivity. This is what another scripture that you Christians have to deal with, man. Luke chapter 1, verse 71 through 75, okay? That we should be saved. What are we saved from? Our enemies, the other nations. According to Psalms 83, all the nations have conspired against us, right? What else does the scripture goes on to say? And from the hand of all that hate us. These other nations hate you, brothers and sisters. They despise you. Verse 72. To perform the mercies promised to our fathers. Who are our fathers? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father, Abraham. That he would grant unto us. The 12 tribes, but the one third right now, but ultimately the entire house of Israel is going to be saved, right? That we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. In holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our life. That's what salvation is going to be for us, brothers. Being saved from our enemies, being saved from all that hate us being gathered and collected from the four corners of the earth, right? Being pulled out of cap captivity, the kingdom of heaven being established. Remember, Peter said it's, it's going to be a kingdom where righteousness, what, dwells. The law being in our inward parts, having those immortal bodies, no longer being oppressed. Pardon me, oppressed. You brothers know what I meant to say. Lord willing, brothers, I hope this lesson was edifying. Shalom.